Hey, welcome back to another SUP Border video. In this video, we're gonna be reviewing and comparing the Bluefin Cruise SUPs. We've got a 10.8 and a 12 foot. We've got it in the normal cruise construction and the cruise carbon construction. We're gonna give you a comparison of these two boards, finding out which board will be best for you to paddle and also which construction you should go for as well. And even if you've got an ice up out there, there's a few features on this board that you will find very interesting. So it's well worth checking out this full video. Now, Bluefin are a relatively young SUP brand that are based in the UK, but we have been getting a lot of questions on our email and social media about this company because they are putting out a lot of marketing messages, a lot of people buying their boards, and obviously there's more interest in around the boards. And that's really what this SUP board review is about, is to answer some of those questions and help you understand if the Bluefin Cruise or Cruise Carbon is the right board for you. So there's a few boards in the Bluefin range, but these are probably two of the most popular sizes. We've got the 10 foot eight in the cruise construction, and we've got the 12 foot in the cruise carbon construction. The full specifications for these boards, both the boards are fairly similar in width, at just over 32 inches wide. Bluefin advertised their board as the 10 six being 83.5 centimeters wide and the 12 foot being 83 centimeters wide. Both the boards are six inches thick, so there's a large amount of volume in both the boards. They both come with two plus one fin boxes. The 10.8 in the cruise construction weighs 12 kilograms, and the cruise carbon, 12 foot here, weighs 15 kilograms. The 10.8 cruise is available online for £499, and the 12 foot cruise carbon is available online for £899. And remember, both these boards come in both these constructions. You can find the 10.8 and the 12 foot in the cruise and the cruise carbon construction. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about the constructions and the differences between the cruise and the cruise carbon, and also then looking at the 10.8 compared to the 12 foot, and then hopefully make you understand which board will be best for you. Now it's clear to see from the Bluefin website that they have put a lot of work into the materials and the manufacturing processes that go into these boards. They say the internal core of drop stitch is the densest drop stitch on the market and they have also put multiple layers of PVC all heated together with heat welding technology making the board very stiff and very hard wearing. Both the boards are finished off with Bluefin's ESL which is an ultraviolet proof dex which means basically the sun doesn't damage the PVC at all. And definitely when you're unrolling and inflating the boards for the first time, they do feel a lot thicker and a bit more heavy duty than a lot of our ice ups on the market. But really the big difference between the cruise and the cruise carbon construction obviously is the carbon in this board. Carbon layer down most of the rail of the board, which offers a great amount of stiffness. But we'll be talking about this stiffness in our deflection desk in a second. But also the cruise carbon has an air duo. It's basically like a double chamber. You might have seen some other brands on the market have done it. It's basically like a smaller board that you inflate inside your bigger board. You can inflate that first. It still takes up to the same PSI rating as the outside of the board, but it gives the board overall much more stiffness. And again, it adds a little bit more to the safety because if the outside of your board deflates, you have still got that inner chamber that stays inflated. The recommended PSI for both these boards is 15 to 18 PSI, and they've got a maximum pressure of 28 PSI, which is one of the highest recommended maximum pressures we've seen on any ice up in general. So they're obviously happy to say, go to that level, these boards are really well made. Putting all that together does make these boards fairly stiff. When we put these boards on our deflection test, which is where we put it on a gap of 1.5 meters apart, and then we put a weight of 75 kilograms in the middle of the board, and then we measure how much the board drops or deflects. Both the boards are pumped up to 18 PSI, but the cruise construction, which is the more lightweight construction, still only dropped 12 millimeters, which is as stiff as some far more expensive boards in the market and boards with more materials or more stiffening rods on them as well as they are very stiff boards. And then moving on to the cruise carbon with the carbon rail and obviously the air duo system in the middle, that only dropped eight millimeters. Now the stiffest board we've ever tested has dropped seven millimeters. So it is a very stiff board. Obviously the materials that they put on and around that board and the process that they've done the manufacturing really does make a difference to the overall stiffness. And both those boards were pumped up to 18 PSI. 
So let's talk about the fittings and the features that you've got on both these boards and then move on to the packages. Both the boards have got action camera mounts up at the front. They take a GoPro or they take a RAM mount fitting in the center. Nice to have a feature on the board. Always good to be filming if you can. Bungees on both the boards up at the nose, the same size, a big heavy duty bungee system up on the nose on the cruise. But also the 12 foot version has got the bungee systems at the back as well. So you can obviously take a bit more load. The deck pad has got it all. It's a crocodile skinned EVA diamond grip deck pad. So it's diamond gripped and crocodile skinned. It's very, very comfortable. It's very thick to stand on and it offers you a large amount of grip. Probably one of the grippiest deck pads we've actually used. The Sentry carry handle is a nice neoprene back carry handle. It's the same carry handle on both the boards, whether you go for the cruise carbon or the standard cruise construction. And at the back of the board, you've got a kick pad, which is nice so if you're doing your step back turns or moving your feet around the back of the board, it's very easy to feel where the back of the board is so you don't step off the back of the board. Then behind that on the 10.8, you've got your leashing point and your pressure valve, and you've got handles up at the nose and at the tail on the 10.8. You've got handles up at the nose and the tail for the 12 foot as well. The only difference is the leashing point is replaced with the cargo bungee system so you can attach your leash onto one of those D-rings instead. The 12 foot has also got handles on the side which is great for portaging and moving your board around and also there's a lot more clips on the 12 foot because it also comes with a shoulder carry strap and both the boards come with a kayak seat attachment that you can use as well. I'm not a massive fan of making them into kayaks, I mean I'm a stand up paddle boarder but the option is there and if you want you can sit down and you can paddle. The paddle also comes with a kayak paddle as well but I'll speak about that in a second. Looking at the fin setups of both these boards, both the boards have two plus one fin setups. What I mean by that is it's got two smaller side fins and one central bigger fin. The Cruise Carbon comes with a US box fin system and a US box fin. The advantage of that is a US box fin is a readily available fin, so you can buy extra fins, different shapes and sizes to go in that fin box. The Cruise Construction of Boards comes with a Smart Lock fin system, which you push in at the front and clip down at the back. The really neat thing about this and the point which is definitely worth saying is you can replace that back section that you push down if you do break or damage it which is a very important thing because when it comes to replacing anything on an ice up it's very hard because it's stuck on and it's on PVC so replacing things is a little bit harder so they've given you a screw system there so you can unscrew it and replace that unit if it does break a really good move simple but really makes a difference so moving on to the two packages you get with the boards and the differences between the two boards. Both the bags are the same. They're both a heavy duty, well-made bluefin bag with a padded back, padded shoulder straps, easily adequate to carry your board, transporting it to and from the beach. It's got no wheels on the back of the bag like some other brands have, but it can easily transport your board if you're going to the airport or traveling around the world. Both the packages come with very similar paddles. They come with three piece paddles and they come with an extra blade so you can plug it in to make it into a kayak if you want to. The cruise construction package comes with a glass paddle, glass shaft, and the cruise carbon obviously comes with a 70% carbon paddle. So it's a lighter, stiffer paddle. The basics around paddles if you're getting into paddle boarding, the lighter, the stiffer the paddle, the more response you're gonna be able to put into that paddle, the quicker that you're gonna be able to pull the paddle through the water and the shaft is going to flex a lot less, which is then gonna put more power into your paddle stroke. The glass shaft is still a stiffer paddle than aluminium, but obviously it weighs a bit more than carbon and it's not as stiff as the carbon one. The blade shape is a basic plastic blade shape. It's a, it's a hard wearing blade that you could easily get your friends and your kids into paddleboarding with as well. It's not the most refined shape, but it's easily adequate to get you on the water, especially as a first time paddler. Fully adjustable, so you can obviously take lots of different heights of riders and it's very easy to use. The two pumps you get with the packages are very different and they do make a difference to when you're inflating the board. The more basic pump that comes with the cruise package is a double action pump. So you pump on the upstroke and on the downstroke and then when the pumping gets hard you can take this black clip out and it just pumps on the downstroke. It's got a pressure gauge that rated up to 21 psi but it will take a bit longer to get the air in with this pump. The cruise carbon boards comes with the GRI triple action pump. We've tested this pump before. It's a very good pump. This new GRI pump is the lighter base one. It's a three action pump so you have three settings. You have pump number one which is using both the chambers on both the ways. Gets a large amount of volume of air in the board and then you can put it onto the setting two which then reduces the friction in your pumping but reduces the amount of air that's going in the board as well and then you can finish it off on setting three which is just finishing off on a downstroke with a single chamber just to get the high amount of 
pressure in the board. A built-in pressure gauge and it's a really nice pump and it is great using this pump, it's definitely when you come to the higher volume, bigger boards like this 12 foot. And both the boards are supplied with a good quality coiled leash and you also get a waterproof phone case as well. So moving on to what these boards are like to paddle on the water. Well, both the boards are nice and wide. They give a nice amount of width, which means it's really stable board to paddle. The 10A is your more of an all round size board. That's the sort of board that most people are gonna go to get into paddle boarding. It's gonna be great. You can catch some small waves. You can take out your friends out. You can take the kids out, put the dog on the front, just generally all round paddling. The basic difference between a 10A and a 12 foot or a longer board is the longer the board, the more glide you're gonna have, the easier it's gonna to be to put Put one paddle stroke in the water and you're going to move further so if you're looking at a board for more flat water based things and not so much of the surf really going some places maybe taking some more weight hence there's more dry bag capabilities with the bungees at the back and the front the 12 foot is going to be a much better board for it you're still going to be able to take the 10 8 on longer journeys and paddle with some miles underneath your board but the 12 foot would be easier and over an hour you would be further ahead with the 12 foot the outlines of both the boards are fairly similar. You've got a nice wide tail, which makes it really stable. Great if you want to move around the board and play around and get into step back turns. A good amount of width there, so you don't find the board is too rocky. And up at the nose, there's still a bit of width at the shoulders at the board, which is up at the top, and again, helps for that stability. On the water, you can't really feel a difference between the fin boxes, whether you're paddling the US box or the Smart Lock fin box. They both have a very similar feel. But remember, the nice thing about the US box is you could upgrade to a bigger fin so you can get a more swept back, a bigger fin, which again would help you with that straight line tracking and paddling further. So looking at who these boards will best suit, ability and weight range. Well, both the boards are going to take a wide range of paddlers. Definitely you can be a complete first time paddler getting into the sport on these boards. They offer a good amount of width and they're a good average size. The 10A is probably the default board for most people, most all round family fun. You're going to be looking at the 10A. Right away, it's up to about 120 kilos. Obviously the heavier you go, you, then you might find the stability becomes a bit more of an issue, but they can take the weight. So if you've done two or three sup lessons and you know that you've been using a 10A board maybe by 33 34 this board will probably still suit you the bigger 12 foot will take more weight up to about 130 kilos but it's very much a similar sort of rider to the 10 8 but it's somebody who wants to obviously travel further put a bit more miles underneath them and maybe do a bit of light touring so to summarize with pros and cons and value for money well pros the construction the process and the stiffness of these boards is incredible incredibly stiff almost the stiffest boards in the market. The value for money for that stiffness is outstanding and the actual whole package you get is very good. The Cruise Carbon is probably worth the upgrade if you can afford it. You get a stiffer paddle, a triple action pump and obviously the board is a lot stiffer. Both the board shapes are gonna suit people getting into the sport for the first time and definitely the price point, it really suits that as well. And looking at cons, well, this is pretty much where we say everything is a compromise because the downside to these boards, in fact, the only downside really is the weight of them. They are heavier than other boards in the market. And the stiff board here, the 12 foot that we've been testing is 15 kilos. That is quite a heavy board. But to be honest, if you want stiffness, if you want a well-made board with lots of materials, it is going to be heavier than the lighter base boards. And if you're looking towards a really light base board, it will not be as stiff. So what Will says from Subboard, he's always talking about things are a compromise. And that's a prime example that weight is a lot heavier, but the boards are a lot stiffer too. So both these boards are on the heavier side of the market, but bear in mind, they are almost the stiffest boards in the markets too. So always bear in mind, everything is a compromise. And if you don't mind the weight, you will get the stiffness with these two blue fins. So I hope you found that SUP board review interesting and informative. If you've got any questions, please fire them over. If you're really getting into SUP, check out SUP Border Mag and also SUP Border Pro, where we do loads of extra content that you do not see on YouTube. But until next time, we'll see you on YouTube and on SUP Border. Thank you very much.